hi guys welcome back to my channel i am shells if you're a new subscriber hello nice to meet you and if you're a returning subscriber you know what it do thank you so much for sticking with me and joining me on this youtubing journey today's video is a sit down one and i'm in my little corner so you know that it's going to be some good content <music> talking to you about the pros and cons of working in the mash team now i'm going to keep it very very short and sweet because i have literally been doing vlogs upon vlogs upon vlogs upon vlogs upon vlogs uh, well not that many vlogs and i've been dropping you some social work gems but i'm here to talk to you about the pros and cons of working in the mash okay let's just get straight into the video my first con of working in the mash team is that it is very 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 fast paced when I say fast paced, I mean like it's When you have loads of cases coming in a day, I don't know what the stats are for each local authority, but there are local authorities who get loads and loads of referrals. You get referrals from literally any and anyone. I could submit a referral if I wanted to about a neighbor. My neighbor could submit a referral about me. There are some times where you don't have occasions to breathe. In the MASH team, there are days where I have gone without having a lunch break. When it's very fast paced, it can be difficult for you to make those decisions that you need to make, have an impact on your ability to make those important threshold decisions each and every day if you're just working like this all the time. My second con would be that cases come back all the time. Like you can deal with something last week, you can either close it down, you can refer it to early help services, you can say, okay, it needs to go over to that team, you can get another referral and another referral. The referrals are endless, they just continue. There's a continuum of referrals. Somebody can make multiple referrals about a family and if you've reviewed it, if you're the social worker that's reviewed it, it might come back to you or it just stays within the team and it just goes in and out and in and out. There are families that I don't even need to see or check on the system and I know them by name because we're getting a referral about them every single blessed week so cases come back all the time and it can be frustrating when you're trying to push through work and you've got that that pop-up repeated case and you've got another repeated case and it's just like hello there are cases that actually require a lot more attention because they're new cases we don't know much about the family history and there's a lot more digging to do so that would be a con for me so my third and final con for working within the mash team is the fact that you can make a decision, a threshold decision, and it gets challenged. It doesn't only get challenged sometimes by your manager, it can get challenged by the other teams that you're sending them across to. So they don't necessarily agree that it's a red, or they don't agree that it's an amber, or they don't agree that it should have even been a referral. They don't even agree that it should have been recorded on the system. Or you can even be challenged by external agencies who think they know it all, who should have been social workers, but they're not, mind you, and they're working in other professionals and they want to challenge your decision making in terms of the outcome of a case. That can be highly frustrating because like we know, you've got an overwhelming amount of work to complete and then you've made decisions and then actually, you know what? no sorry we don't agree we don't think it's this we don't think it's met the threshold for our intervention or no actually it should have been closed down you need to make it go to that service and da, da, da. these are the things that we hear day in day out by professionals all the time um, i have worked in local authorities where they've made the actually overarching decision that whatever decision the mash team makes it's final. I think off the back of that, it's always beneficial to make sure you case record, case note, make sure everything is recorded. Every discussion you have, case discussions, conversations with other professionals, emails that are sent across, make sure it's case recorded on the child's case files. 
we can now move on to the pros. <laughs> we can move on to the pros. It's not all doom and gloom over here. I think for me, the biggest pro to working in the MASH team will be that you can finish at five o'clock. There is scope for you finishing your work at five o'clock. Like, trust me, when I say you can finish at five o'clock, if you know how to manage your caseload and you know how to make sure you stay on top of everything and you submit everything within time and you've sent out all of your checks and you've recorded while shot on the phone rather than writing your handwriting case notes and then you follow the tips that I've shared with you in my previous videos okay you can finish at five o'clock like every other industry okay there is no need for social workers to be staying behind typing up notes typing up this typing up unless there's an emergency or unless yeah there's an emergency I really feel like we should be able to stay on top of our work it is possible we can do it, but everybody's got different learning styles. Everyone's got different working styles, and that can obviously have an impact on how you manage your caseload. My second pro is that there is flexible working. Now, I feel like what COVID has taught a lot of services, a lot of boroughs, local authorities, and even um, other industries that actually people don't physically need to be in the office in order for them to complete their work. Now, COVID, we were forced into working from home. We had to work from home and there was only a few people permitted into the office. Um, I know some matches you would do a week in, week out, etc. So this hybrid working, um, I think it's a very good opportunity for you to have that work-life balance. Um, in all honesty, I think the only benefit of the MASH team being in the office is to have that multi-agency kind of response. So when you run over to the police and you want to gather further information or you run over to an exploitation team and you say, oh, do you know this case? I'm putting it on your radar or whatever. Or you just want to have a conversation with somebody i think that is very helpful and obviously having sight of your manager if you're not if you're new and you don't really know where things are you don't really know how the processes work but we are in the age and the world where they're planning metaverse okay which means everything's going to be online so if we can sit down and we can gather audiences online i'm speaking to you guys through my phone i upload it and you're getting this information online um you attend seminars etc online you shop online do you get what i'm saying everything is online now so i definitely feel like there is scope for that hybrid working working some days in the office and other days you know having it off and being able to be at home still getting your work done mind you the pressures are still there still getting your work done but just having that flexibility there as well and then i think my third and final pro for working in the mash team multi-agency safeguarding hub is it's a big one for me um, and the reason why I say it's a big one for me is because when you become a parent, you definitely, definitely, definitely have to consider your child. Your child should be at the forefront. Um, and I, I'm always going to quote this because a friend always used to say to me in social work, every child matters, which is a policy legislation. Um, including my own so every single child matters including my own yes as social workers you have a duty to safeguard yes the needs of other children are paramount but actually if you're working long hours if you're running in and out of the house if you're doing all of these other things centered around your work and you're not able to meet your own child's basic needs or you're fobbing them off onto other people is there an element of ne emotional neglect there are you actually you know being available and attuned to your child's needs and these are massive things for me right now and it's a complex that i think of oh my gosh like i'm literally pouring out so much into other people's children and yes it's my job yes i've taken on yes that's what i signed up for but i also have a child of my own and he matters too and i think that's it i'm done i am finished if you enjoyed that video please 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 give it a thumbs up like comment below let me know any other social work content that you would like to see from me any questions that you have drop it in the comments below um if you're not already subscribed to my channel i am shells and i'll be back with another video bye hi guys welcome back to <laughs> oh lord this is how you now look <laughs>